same as my uh, last um, little segment. Um, thank you to the uh, Acornsoft guys for that last bit. Um, really, really interesting. Um, I love, absolutely love hearing about um, what was going on behind the scenes and, and uh, you know, all that kind of thing. So thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. Um, so I haven't got, I mean, I've got like half an hour, I think, just to um, uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse into the archive. It's really hard to do, um, you know, just looking at some of the, the games and the, the bits of software that we've got. But I've, I've just picked a, a few kind of, not a random, but um, just to, to follow in from the last talk a little bit um, and uh, just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that's here. Um, and also to talk about what we do in terms of trying to keep the best version of all these things. Um, you'll see I've got my gloves on um, so that I seem like a proper museum person um, and, uh, and don't get grease and horribleness all over the games. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm going to start with... Um, Hugo said earlier that he offered us um, the games and we kind of just didn't want it. Um, we, we might have said no, but if I remember rightly, um, we did say that we do have it um, and that, you know, if that's your only copy, we would really like you to have that. That should be in your um, possession still. So um, just to prove these things, let's just get out here um, a couple of the software packs we've got, um, starting with the Atom. Um, so games back there, Snapper, um, Invaders, Wampus. Um, these, are, these are really nice. Um, they open up, if anybody hasn't seen these before, um, got the polystyrene around the side there with the game inside. Um, and um, yeah, they're just really nicely presented. Um, you've also got, and this doesn't happen all that much. Um, so we've got here Snapper, um, author Hugo Tyson. Look at that, um, naming lights and everything. So. Um, Acorsoft, if, if I sort of um, looking back on these things now, they actually sort of did credit the people that did um, the work on these games. Um, a lot of companies didn't, they, you know, they, they bought the rights to the game and, and just uh, um, you know, put them out there as, as that company's game and that's it, no individuals were recognised. Um, so yeah, so we've got Games Pack 9, we've got the rest of the Games Packs as well. What's quite interesting, if I've got in this pile here, um, so I'll switch back to the other camera. Um, so we've got other ones, this Games Pack 5. I um, don't know if you can really see it on camera, um, but it is still sealed. Um, now, uh, Chris Jordan is, a, is another name uh, associated with Acorn Soft, and he's donated a huge amount of pre-packed, oh, pre um, unopened software. Um, so we have quite a few Acorn games and uh, software packs that have never even been opened. Now, this is a tricky one for the museum um, because if we had a game and it's never been opened before, you know, how would we eat it and, and things? And should we open it just to be able to do that? Don't know. Um, fortunately, we haven't really come across that as too much of a problem because there's lots of other um, copies out there that are open that have been imaged. But, um, but yeah, so there you go. There's an unopened one. And we've got quite a few others, probably um, a good dozen or more of those um, packages there from Acorn Soft um, going back to the Electron. I'll... Um, Let's go back to that camera there. So were they not the most exciting of um, packages you might think? Um, I really like this um, because when you open it, you've got this big bank area there and you can just about see at the top um, is the EEPROM that it came on. Um, so that's the, the word age package there. The EEPROM just stuck in the polystyrene at the top. Um, so there you go. That's the word pack ROM. Um, so, and we also mentioned earlier, um, the, uh, games like Defender. Now there's not actually that many of these around really. They was pulled quite quickly. Um, and somebody mentioned about playing, um, sorry, a bit loose with the uh, copyright and things, um, which I think is a little bit unfair. You have to put yourself, um, back in those days and, um, the way people were thinking and actually go back a little bit further. And there was people like um, Bill Gates having to write open letters to communities saying, well, actually software is something that has, you know, it's a commodity. It is something that can be sold. Um, so there should be protection for software. But when it comes to games at the time, um, yeah, what the guys were saying before was entirely right. At the time, the thinking wasn't quite as it is now. Um, so creating something that's like that original game um, you know, that, that should be fine. Um, but 
IP and everything else develops, software potentially develops, and it becomes something now that, that couldn't happen. But back then it was different, um, and that's what needs to be understood. So there's, there's Defender, as it was originally released, um, later to be planetoid, but just with a, a single name change. Um, there we have uh, another, another pack there, Rocket Raid. I don't know, I mean, you've preaching to converted here, and I'm showing you all things that, um, that you know. Um, this was done by a guy called Jonathan Griffiths. I mean, what happened to him, eh? Um, but uh, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's just the, the standardization. Again, I like, I really like the way um, that the packages were standardized and they all match. These look great on a shelf. Um, you know, if you've got your whole collection with all these titles and they all match um brilliant stuff uh the every single one of them um had exactly the same down the side there same at the front um, if, if you look at playstation 2 games now um they changed the way that the uh, game is laid out on the spine now i know i'm being a little bit of a muppet but you know i, I just kind of like that sort of thing attention to detail that um just shows through in my opinion um here's another one the examiner I don't know if anybody recognizes, it, recognizes that. Um, again, never been opened. Still got the um, um, price sticker on from uh, Microchips, if anybody remembers them. Um, but this was a package, uh, anyway, that. package that you could um, uh, basically put in questions and, and fill in all the uh, multiple choice answers and then put that out as, a, um, as an exam for students and things. So an educational uh, title there. Um, don't know if any of you guys remember that one specifically. I don't, you don't see this one come up very often. Um, moving on. Yeah, the just Jason. Pages. Sorry, no, you were talking. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, talking about the, the the names on the spines and the the similar graphics, uh, the the text. That was all Chris. Chris Jordan was the one who uh, he and <laughs> Philip Bush was another one back there. But he yeah, was yeah. The one who who out the, the the detail on all of those the similarities of everything and uh, made it look so professional. So, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's, um, yeah, Chris, Chris has been told us quite a lot about, um, you know, his involvement and everything. And, um, and yeah, that, that, I didn't know that. Um, he never mm -hmm. actually said that, but that's, uh, that's interesting. And, and yeah, very definitely. Um, but uh, what was the other thing that, I, and I can't quite remember the game, um, but, uh, and, it, and I think it's this one, um, Philosopher's Quest, um, but quite often, uh, the the name of the game would be sent off to some artist to say, can you create some artwork for it? Um, and they would send something back that's basically got very, very little to do with the game. And it's just the kind of what they imagined it to be like. Um, you know, quite often they weren't even told what the game was about anyway. Um, so the cover would come back and it was like, well, whatever. Slap yes, it because on. it was... <laughs> because it wasn't... A, it was pure text. So all the other games, you know, that Tim and I did and Neil... They were all graphical, so we could have a nice graphical, you know, a screenshot. Spend it, getting a nice screenshot, and then we'd have it taken with a very nice camera, and then we could use it as the artwork. But yes, you're right. With a text game, it didn't work so well. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they um, used to have a used to have a special camera with a hood that went over the monitor screen. Yeah. Rather than taking the video feed, they had a, a camera that, with a hood that faced over the monitor screen, so they could take the pictures from the, uh, the screenshots. Produce an enormous. Um, image, uh, a positive image that was about six inches across. It was a vast great thing. I don't remember much more about it except somewhere on Barnwell Drive. I remember going there with DJD once. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you do stuff. the neat trick of halting a BBC machine using um, the Econet? Because one of the things we did when fighting through the last stages of some, some of the games, playing them just a bit after hours in... Um, in the water softening plant or silver building, you could have someone else on the Econet, and you can basically go freeze it, and and you, you know you can you know do this and concentrate on what you're going to do next, and then go start it and run it for exactly two seconds. Right, go, stop, <laughs> just to do the next manoeuvre, and um, you know that's the sort of thing to use for taking the good screenshots, right? Because you're yeah. in the middle of the action, but not blurred. Um, did did you do anything like that, or uh, anyone remember? Anyway, just mentioning that you could do that to uh, to have more of the time than you might otherwise have at games. It just, it only just I don't remember us doing that at all. But, uh, yeah. I remember writing a, a thing that would uh, freeze it when you press a, a certain key on the keyboard. So that's how I got I think I got my games to work for, for, for freezing them so that we could take a screenshot. I, Obviously, that works oh. too. I'm pretty, we didn't use an Econet because we just had a single standalone machine for the purpose. Uh, so. Mm. 
Weird. I do remember other people like John Thackeray beating me at my own games <laughs> by playing Snapper until the, <laughs> and probably using tricks like you were just suggesting. Yeah, well, he's very competitive, isn't he? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, um, we uh, we have a number of these packages as well uh, in the museum, obviously. So we keep the disc and the um, uh, cassette versions as well. Um, and any minor differences as well. If we find games with slight minor differences in um, in the production, uh, we keep those as well. Um, I'm looking to, yeah, so the um, envelope, the, the hint sheets there have never been opened. For that one this one's again in really nice condition so what's happened probably uh, probably a couple of times is that uh we have a game that comes into the collection uh philosopher's request like this one and maybe the case is a little bit tatty or whatever um then we might get another one in so in our database it, it does actually state the condition um that we have uh if another one comes in and we think actually this one sounds like it's better than the one we have we swap them around um and we keep building up the absolute best collection that we possibly can so, um, so that's what happens in the database. Now, um, somebody mentioned earlier about painting the fourth bridge and it is a little bit like that. Now, the, the problem is that when we first started this collection, we didn't record the condition. We didn't think we needed to. We could just go to the box and go and have a look if we needed to compare. Um, but actually there are now hundreds and hundreds of boxes full of these things um, to go back and check each one individually is a nightmare. So then we've added the condition field so that we can go back and, and do a, a compare so we don't have to go back and do a compare. Um, we can now document in the database. So um, that's what happens when we get software in. We try and keep the best we possibly can. Um, what's your weight? Um, I have to say, Acorns have done some very interesting tiles. Um, one of my favourite, I should have got it out, shouldn't I? Um, is kind of the... Um, uh, the, the guide to being married and things like that. Um, brilliant stuff. Um, but yeah, so there's the Watch Your Weight package with its little book and its cassette. Um, and where have we got to? So then there's a few other things. So even when we get packages in like this, um, so let's put those over there. Um, these are just the same pretty much as the, uh, as the UK versions, um, but these are the German versions of those packages that you'll know and love, um, obviously for the Electron. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the original um, sort of uh, welcome pack, as it were, for the Electron and um, Death Diary and things like that. But we'll keep those as well. Those are really, um, you know, important to us to get those versions. Um, getting a little pile up there, probably getting in the way of the camera. Uh, and then some sort of rarities that you, you might find out there sometimes. So, plus three games pack. Um, took us quite a while to stumble across this one. Um, funnily enough, when somebody donated a plus three, but there you go. Um, so yeah, the plus three games back with its three and a half inch floppy disk there. Um, so again, making sure that we keep the best we can. If we get another one that hasn't got the little marks up the top there, we'll take it and swap it at some point. Um, what games are on that, Jason? I'm sorry? What games are on that one? Just had to what games that. are on this one? They are, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. You knew I was going to put my glasses on for that. Um, they are Firebug. Maze and Planetoid. There you go. Um, cool. Thank you. So, oh, they're on the front as well, actually. Could have read it from there. Um, yeah, three games on disc for the plus three. Um, this, <laughs> this, was, um, uh, this was between a couple of games in the box. It's been archived. It's on the website. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, just talking about uh, little bits of paraphernalia, um, Acorn um, Research and Development notepad there. Somebody scribbled on the front of it, and you know, the rest of the pages are all clean. Um, so uh, don't know why that was in that particular box, but there you go. Um, so we, we have a, a random access filing system. Oh, that's how we like to call it. Um, so we have lots and lots of boxes. And the box has a number, and that box has a location. Um, and as long as what we have in the archive uh, is in a box and that box has a location we can go and find it. Um, if we have something and it's not done properly, we'll never find it again. There is so much stuff here, you'll never find it. So, um, but it doesn't really matter what goes in what box really, as long as um, it's documented. Um, really nice. And there is a little bit of a bent here, isn't there? I, um, you can see what's going on here. Um, so uh, yeah, there you go, Snapper. But um, unlike lots of uh, in, um, electron games, it's on cartridge. 
So, um, yeah, we have to deal with lots of things, um, you know, different formats and all that sort of stuff. And as much as we have um, Snapper on cassette, we've also got it on cartridge. Um, so and it's really nice. The so, trouble is with a lot of these games is they do get squashed. Um, the boxes do get crushed when they're put away and all that sort of stuff. So finding a really nice one like this. So I think you're ahead of me. I don't have that. Ah, <laughs> I've got various other versions of it, but not that one. <laughs> oh, we've, we've only got the one. Uh, no, I so. understand. It's fine. You keep yeah, it. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye out for you. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, but it's, it's really nice. I love it when, when they are so pristine like that. Mm. Um, talking of pristine, um, showed uh, this one earlier. So this is where we're heading with a lot of the games. We haven't done all of ours yet. You know, there are, um, I can't remember what it was, nearly 13,000 uh, documented um, items so far for games. But we are heading towards this where they are bagged and tagged. Um, lots are done, but still more to do. Um, but this is an elite. Um, I don't know if you can see the shine on it. Or is it there? Mm. Um, but again, that's never been over. shrink. So, um, so yeah, lovely. Um, back in there. I also get told off. Um, and then sort of packages like this as well. So there's some really heavy duty packages um, that we have in the place. So there's logo um, for the Electron. Um, I'll do that on that camera there. So um, but you can see there are so many bits and pieces that go in it. So when we do itemize these on the, the website, we have to go through and say this has its reference card. Um, it has its um, loading sheet there. It has its poster. Um, it has its introduction to book. It has the other book, whatever that one was, <laughs> um, and the extension examples book. It has its cartridge. It has its tape. It has its plastic inlay at the back. Um, we go right down to that kind of detail. Um, so that again, you know, when another one comes in, we can just check to see um, what is actually in the box. We have to go and, and check it all again. Um, and you know, we will we will make a note if one of these covers had a stain on it or something. We would make a note that that particular one um, not quite up to standard. Um, th this takes hours and hours and hours. Um, you know, especially going back over things that we've we've done in the past and re-adding, well not re-adding, but adding um, information that, that we didn't have in the first place because we didn't know we needed it, um, is it, it, just something that takes an immense amount of time. It needs to be done though, you know, it's, it's how we make sure that we've got a handle on the collection. Um, I'm not sure really there's anybody else out there doing it quite like we are. Um, I like to think that we are doing it to the absolute best that we can do, um, given the resources that we have. Um, so, but sometimes things do go wrong and um, I've, I'm going to have to put up my hand and I'm say I'm sorry um, because um, we had a donation uh, come in um, from a, uh, uh, a Mr. Griffiths. Um, and, um, and, and, and in the most part, that, document, uh, that, that, that donation was all documented. And I believe... Uh, what I have an order, I think that first screen's working. I'm sorry? Uh, just two cheeseburgers, please. Two cheeseburgers? <laughs> what? That's, um, a good, that's a great random one. How much, sir? Make it three Thank cheeseburgers. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I'm vegetarian. Anyway, whatever. Um, so, right, so we'll, um, we'll gloss over that. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, so, so Jonathan kindly donated some of his uh, items to the collection. Um, and then Dave mentioned um, some code for a game that was in a red folder. And mm. I swore blind um, that we didn't have it. Um, and um, it, it turns out that you, Jonathan might have actually brought it in um, uh, a couple of days later or something, speaking to Adrian, and we haven't quite added it to the list of things we had. So we do indeed have it. Um, so what uh, Jonathan has kindly donated to the collection, um, I don't know how much of that is readable. Um, yeah. um, but this is the source code um, for, let's have a look here. Um, for a game called Tanks, or at least that's what's on the mm, That is the first version of Conqueror. Indeed. Um, so, uh, copyright Mr. J.P. Grittis and D.J. Braben. Um, yes. So, um, it is here, it is at the museum, it is safe and sound, because I, um, I denied 
the knowledge of it to begin with. Um, That's right. Wasn't wonderful. I'd remember it being the source code for Snapper, but it wasn't, was it? it was no, no. So there was, there was two things there because I, I, I was looking for Snapper, um, but um, it was indeed that one. So it, it has been looked after, kind of, um, by the time we'd got it added to our inventory. Um, but there it is. So, um, but things like this are really, really important to us um, because, you know, it is that behind the scenes. For anybody who's going to look back on all this um, in X, hundred years, some, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, the, and, and none of us are around to be able to tell somebody face to face what this was all about. Um, this kind of thing is really, really important that they have all the different bits um, and parts of the story. Um, so we know we're not going to get this kind of stuff from everybody. Um, you know, source code, generally speaking, is fairly highly uh, guarded. Um, but, uh, you know, when we can get it and we can get um, it's got a sort of you know, scribbles of character design and things like that. Um, the guys at Sony have kindly donated um, some uh, d character development uh, graphics uh, to us and that sort of thing. So these all go into the collection and they're all associated with their um, end game, as it were, the game that was finally released. So this will be um, sort of added to Conqueror so that you can see that we do have mm -hmm. the, the code uh, for it as well. So thank you very much, Jonathan, for, for, for that. Um, and I'm glad we finally got, got the two tied up together. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that's probably about it for me. I didn't know really how far to go. I mean, there's, there's hundreds. I think on the BBC Micro, if you go to our website and you go to, say, the BBC Micro and you click on software or, or something, it's about 1,400 um, items there at the moment. Um, now, you know, there's a lot that hasn't been done still. Um, and, you know, it will keep going on. Uh, but there's a lot that has been done um, and we just want to keep going, building upon that. Um, so I just randomly picked a few. You've got a ROM chip there uh, for the Atom and you know, the cartridges, cartridges. And, like and different packages. So hopefully that was of some interest. Go on our website. There's, there's, they're all there, the ones that we've done so far. Um, again, I, I said it earlier in the, in the last one, you know, we need help to do this. Uh, we need a literal army um, of people to photograph you know, these games when they're open, we have the covers scanned, but we don't sort of have the time to be able to photograph the different angles and that, so that people all over the world can see this collection in detail. Um, you know, we need all that um, done and, and write-ups about what the games are and things like that. So if anybody feels um, they have the time to do so, please do get in touch. Um, but yeah, that's probably it. It's early, but um, uh, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to... Uh, well, talk. I've, I've got a quick one, which, hmm. which is that your Acornsoft Games Pack 5 there, I think it was five, the one with babies on it. Can you see um, it? Uh, uh, five has got Invaders, Wumpus, and Reversi. Oh, okay. There was another one that had definitely, or perhaps it was six. I can't remember now. Six, Dodgems, Simon, and, and Amoeba. Okay, and there was a, yet another one then. I remember oh. writing a breakout game for it. Oh, for yeah, Babies. Sorry, okay. Yeah, you go. If you open that, I think it'll say that Tim wrote the Babies. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, that's definitely my bouncing babies. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, Tim Dobson. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, babies by Tim. Dobson. So that so that wasn't written by Tim. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, I recognise the name, and uh, I remember writing, uh, say, a breakout game for the same series of uh, yeah, games packs. So. Uh -huh. But Hugo wrote the snap up of that. I think I did a ski run program as well for some one of the minimatum, I think it was. Ah, uh, yes, yes, it could be. I remember writing a some, yeah. I was a bouncing baby. You were a bouncing bomb or whatever it was. And bouncing <laughs> Babies was also a teardrop explode song at the time, wasn't it? Anyway. It's great that we're, we're getting this kind of background information as well in these videos uh, when you guys agree to come do these the talks and things. Um, you know, we like to try and do some as well um, when we've done interviews with people here. Uh, again, you know, there's just not enough time in the day to, to do this. Um, but when we're doing things like today and we've got all this little chat between you, it's great. So we really appreciate it. It all adds into that archive. So thank you. So just to interject, thank, thank you, Jason, for that again. It always seems to me that it has to, to, to say thank you and uh, move on. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize, but I've been given the job voluntarily, I might add. But um, <laughs> I, I think, um, Dave, you had something to say before we move on to the, the BBC Micro OS? Uh, yes, I hope it's not a spoiler for John's talk.
I can see John's joined us now and I'm conscious it is five o'clock. But earlier, Jason produced Philosopher's Quest and said he was aware there was something in the game artwork that the author didn't know anything about. It might have been this, because I happened to show John Thackeray this cover scan, and he mentioned there was this leg, which he has not got a clue what it's about, but <laughs> the, the artist decided to put a leg on the cover, and it is not in the game. Secondly, this is the Centre for Computer History website, and they've got these two French release Acornsoft games, which I've never seen in the flesh, and they're both Jonathan's. It's Rocket Raid, Pour le British Broadcasting Computer. Shouldn't that say L'Ordinateur or something? And, and also yeah, Snapper. Oh, yeah, it's L'Ordinateur. It's, uh, and, and British doesn't sound like a very French word either. <laughs> oh, <so laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> Yeah, so they're on the website. And finally, just to give an example, Jason was saying how he collects different versions of the text is slightly different. I, I think Chris won't mind me sharing this. He's very keen to get exposure of this kind of thing. But this is what we're doing at the moment is archiving, re-archiving discs. And um, this shows how, look, here's three original releases mm -hmm. of, of Acornsoft Elite. And they're all different. They have different, some of them have different birthdays. You can see the duplicator stamps actually in the information contained between the tracks it will show the birth dates and yes yeah, so what when you know but a lot of these are discs i dumped 15 years ago at a very low level we just assumed oh it's only right that's elite done that's revs done but it turns out the packaging could look the same the label could look the same there can be multiple variances as perhaps they discovered look here's an arcadians that isn't you know it's a dual format one so there's a 40 track Arcadians originally, there's a dual format one that isn't 1770 compatible. And then I think it was Jez San had to rewrite the copy protection to make it 1770 compatible. So this is now where we're, we're actually having another look at discs in collections to see what- So you know, Arcadians was, uh, was Nick, uh, what was Nick, his Nick name? Pelling. Nick Pelling, yes. Nick Pelling, that's right, yes. Orlando M. Pilchard. <laughs> Was his silly nickname. I can't remember why he chose that as his nom de plume. But, uh. <laughs> well, that was the last thing. There was a there's an acorn soft. Uh, there's a breakout on Games Pack One written by Chris Howell. There was also a breakout on Games Pack Ten, which was the for the minimum atom, the two K atom. So is it possible, Jonathan? Mm. Did you write the one on Games Pack Ten for the minimal? The well, perhaps I did then. Uh, I only have this vague memory of doing it. Um, a long run time ago. There as well. Second, got ski run listed there. Is that one that Tim wrote? Yes, I, I do remember writing a ski run. No, I, very... wrote the, I wrote the ski run, I think. Oh, you wrote ski run. Sorry, sorry, I don't remember writing it. <laughs> so basically, we think this is yours then. The, the 2K um, breakout is John's, right. and according to the Google, which I guess, oh, the Centre for Computer History website, so they have written this down based on what's on the inlay, and it says yeah, well, it's it, on it, one is by Chris. Perhaps I'm, 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 I could be misremembering. I remember writing some games for those, um, for the game packs, but I can't actually, if, I guess if you look at the inside covers, they will have it down. I think Breakout was quite a common game. I think there were several different versions of that. I think I even, I, I wrote a version of that as well at one stage, but I don't know. Yeah, I remember there being a Teletext one as well. I remember Col lots of people writing things like Breakout, or indeed just, if, you've if you'd written Pong, which a lot of people did, then mm. writing a Breakout was really quite straightforward as well. Right. You just learned how to move a rectangle about and detect if it hit another rectangle. So yeah, a lot of people did that just for fun. And I think quite a lot of the machines were capable of doing a perfectly adequate Breakout and or Pong in basic. They were fast enough, you know, you didn't even to... Uh, even have to go into the scary realms of assembly. So yeah, there were tons of versions so, of that sort of thing. Um, yeah. On all manner of the other computers that everybody else had as well. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Breakout. Which versions? Whose version is that? Not mine. Uh -huh. it's, no. kind of, it's kind of mine, but it's actually playing the arcade ROM. Uh -huh. so it's it's really um, Mr. Apples. <laughs> well, he's credited, but isn't it? Not only him. Right. Yeah, I don't know if you call that an emulator or a source code port, where you generate the source code by disassembling. Ooh. Okay. Yes. That's not yet. Uh, so that's one of you. Yeah. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It's neither black box nor white box. <laughs> yeah. 
we're all. It doesn't look very impressive. Through mm -hmm. And it's got my programmer art. Oh, I like how the uh, the paddle is tracking the mouse, of course, isn't it? That's why the mouse is dodging around. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I got on BM. Yes, BM, sorry. There's an analog mouse stick option. So, uh, yeah, handy, because otherwise paddle games are a bit tricky to play nowadays. Excellent.